So I'm at church the other day, and I am about to go into the, the youth Sunday school class, and I see um, my bishop is in there with the kids already. So I give them a, a second, and he's laughing, and they're joking, and I, I can't tell what it's about. And then he starts laughing harder, and they all start laughing, and then he starts laughing even harder, gets a little bit red in the face. They all start laughing. I'm like, oh, they're having a good time. They're bonding. Um, and he walks up, walks straight up to me and goes, I don't know what just happened, but they're talking about burning down their school. And I laugh. He laughs. Then he pats me on the shoulder and says, go fix it. Good luck. And <laughs> walks away. Um, and so I walked in there and I said, what is going on here? Like, what are, you, what are you guys talking about? You can't joke about burning down your school. They were like, we're not really going to do it. And I was like, good. Don't even really joke about it. And we, we had that fun conversation. Um, but then they said, well, hold on, hold on. Like we, we were just talking about, he asked how school was going and you know, we're middle schoolers with opinions. So we started telling him how school was going. I said, okay, I have an idea. I, I, I work in a, in a middle school, so I can, I can understand you wanting to talk about, um, school. So why don't we try this instead? You all focus really, really well on your lesson. You do a really good job and I will, um, tell you why we shouldn't burn down schools, but we should probably ban gym class. And uh, they were like, yeah, we want to hear all about that. That sounds amazing. Let's ban gym class. And so instead of burning down schools, we're just burning down gym class. Um, I, they were excellent. My uh, good friend of mine is the teacher in there, and they have been bugging me about it ever since. So never make a promise to a middle schooler unless you intend to keep it. So here I am. I'm going to answer their question um, and uh, as best I can with three points. So let me start off with, I don't actually think that we should ban gym. Um, I... I know that that's kind of a, an attention grabber and that was a little bit unfair to them. But I think what you will find is it is fair to say that we're banning gym as we know it if, if we were to follow what I'm about to propose to you. Um, and, uh, and so maybe don't think of it in, in terms of getting rid of gym entirely, but it very much is rebuilding gym from the ground up. Um, and it's not just about gym. It's actually about public education a little bit more generally. Um, so let me kind of dive in and tell you where I got all of this from. So I saw an article a little while back. In fact, let me see if I can pull it up. Um, I think it was an Atlantic article. And I just Googled um, our Atlantic article gym class. And the first two that came up were, were what gym class was like for Atlantic readers. And gym class is so bad, kids are skipping school to miss it. Um, that's the one, that second one is the one that I found. So gym class is so bad, kids are skipping school to avoid it. Not only does, this is the subtitle, not only does PE do little to improve physical fitness, but it can also lead to truancy and other disciplinary problems. So, um, I read this article and I was a little bit astounded by it. Uh, I shared it on Facebook and, uh, found that there were some very strong opinions about this. And I think, um, getting rid of gym is, is something that, uh, gets everybody really passionate. So let me share some of the findings of this article. Um, the Atlantic article is really powerful in part because it, it looks at the data around what students are doing to get out of that class. What it found was that students are misbehaving more. They're trying to get out of class. If it's at the beginning of the day in particular, they'll just skip class. If it's like second or third period, they'll skip school until that class. And then sometimes we'll start to wonder, why do I even keep going at that point? I've already skipped. I didn't get in that much trouble. Um, and Jim isn't actually producing a lot of the results we would want in terms of healthy kids who are health conscious. conscious. Um, and I think that that's an important thing to, to note as well. So here are my three big points. Um, I'll, just to keep it short, I told the kids that I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go on and on for three hours. So I'm going to try and keep it to three quick points, hopefully about 15 minutes or less. Point number one, I don't think we recognize just how much we um, infringe on kids and their liberty with public schooling. Um, and their ability to choose and their autonomy as, as adults in embryo instead of as these, uh, you know, we, we do not do them any favors when we take away from them their agency. And I think it shows disrespect to them, but I also think it's, it's not serving them. Like if we were just, it, you know, there's always this idea that if, we, if it's good for you, then you just have to do it. I don't think that's what's going on here. I actually don't think it's good for them. We're just asking them to do it because it's how it's always been done. Um, and I think there's a lot of evidence for that. So um, Ken Robinson is, I think, still the most listened to um, TED Talk out there. And he blew my mind, as I'm sure he's blown many of your minds if, if you listen to him. I think that if he and I made a, a school program, we would make very, very different programs. So let me start with that. Um, that does, in other words, I don't think that all of his ideas are right. I, I think he and I disagree on a lot. But I don't think you can walk away from a TED Talk with him without asking some really deep fundamental questions. And I, that's the kind of person I like to listen to. 
one of the things that he pointed out was that it's that schools are factories. They have bells that tell you when you can get up and move. There are um, ladies' rooms and men's rooms. They, and, and I think my favorite is that um, the production line is sorted based on date of manufacture, right? Um, you, you move on to the next grade level based on how old you are. Um, and in fact, I, as an aside, I think that's one of the biggest problems with education is that age is such a bad proxy for where you actually are in your education. And if we could change that, we would, we would make a huge difference. Um, when he said that, that it's a factory, that, that struck me pretty profoundly. And the first thought that I had was, um, I had a friend when I was, when I was doing some volunteer missionary work in Houston, Texas, who talked to me about working on a factory line and how strict it is that you can't go to the bathroom um, during, during the time that you're on the line, because if you do, if you have to stop, the whole factory has to stop and it causes a huge problem. So there's specific times when you can take breaks and during the rest of the time, you just don't get to. Um, and, uh, I, I said, well, that doesn't seem very fair. I mean, that sounds like terrible conditions. He said, no, they pay well, right? I can find a lot of jobs that'll let me go to the bathroom when I want, but this one pays me double. So I go and it's, it's worth it for my family. And I am very used to when I can go and when I can't, I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. Um, the more that I thought about it, though, schools do the same thing. It's one of the only places other than um, factories where you actually have to ask permission to go to the bathroom. And the difference is that this isn't an option that people are taking. They're not choosing to be in this education factory. They're actually required by law to be there. And they aren't allowed to go to the bathroom unless the adult that is in the room says, yes, you can go to the bathroom. So a, a second example um, that I think is a much more obvious one that a, a lot of my friends are interested in there's increasing research that says that starting school really, really early is not good for kids. We primarily do it because we want to make sure that parents can drop off their kids and then get off to whatever job they need to get off to. Um, but as it turns out, kids waking up early and earlier is really, really bad for them. Um, I agree with that in part. And what I mean by that is I actually, you know, if some kids want to wake up super early and go to school, I don't have a problem with that. And I think some kids are capable of that. That's great most kids aren't, and I think it's more damaging than it is helpful. My point isn't to say we should all change all of our school times to earlier. I think that's repeating the same problem. It's having one model that works for all kids. Instead of saying, actually, maybe there are different models that work better for different kids. Maybe we should increase innovation and allow schools to start, set their own start times. Or maybe even say, you can come really early and then go home for a few hours and then come back in the afternoon and take some more classes, especially in high school where that's actually very doable. Um, I think that more choice and more options and more, more of those kinds of things are actually really, really important. So number one, like, I don't think we pay attention to how school affects kids. And I don't think we take seriously when they complain about it to us because we went through it and they're just going to have to go through it too. I think that's really dangerous. Um, and in particular, when, when I look at gym class, like talk to a teenager and say like, Hey, what do you think of school gym? And they will give you the long, like, what are, what are two funny stories of something that happened in gym? What's your favorite part about gym and your, and your least favorite part about gym? And some of them will love gym. Don't get me wrong. And, and, and I should also clarify, there are some kids who gym is their thing and they respond really well to it and it's really good for them and they build a self, sense of self-esteem. There are other kids for whom it's a place where they get bullied and, and body shamed. And I think that this, this, is, this, is a, this is a huge deal, right? And it's bigger than just gym. Okay. I also want to take a second just to say, I am not blaming gym teachers. Okay. I, I work with gym teachers. I have some good friends who are gym teachers. Uh, that's not the issue. I think that gym teachers would be the first to tell you, uh, this isn't about how I teach. This is about the way that it's set up and that it's just, it's just not organic to, way, to the way that the kids ought to learn. So point number one is, I don't think that we are fair to kids in the way that we... Um, I'm trying to find my notes. Sorry. I don't think we are fair to kids in the way that we have set up um, schools and we don't listen to them often enough when they talk about, hey, this is, this is really kind of, kind of crummy. I don't really like it. Um, so that's number one. Number two, um, you can tell how much of school is compulsory and how much of it is like, no, it's actually good for you. It's just, it may not be fun. And the way that you can tell is when you start taking away tools and people say, well, then how would we control the kids? So let me give you a couple of examples. Um, I think gym is a really good example because in a lot of, in a lot of cases, it's not a high school graduation requirement. It certainly isn't a middle school graduation requirement. And a lot of kids don't feel like they're learning anything that's super valuable or super meaningful. Um, they know what they're supposed to do. They know they're supposed to eat healthy and they, you know, most, most of the time they go because they can play basketball. And if they don't like to play basketball, then they don't really enjoy the experience. Um, I've started talking to, to, I, I actually read this in an article by Michael Horn, who's a, a, a scholar that I, I really respect. 
Um, he's, he's kind of an ed choice, ed tech guy. Um, and he said, you know, one of the easiest things we could do is actually separate grading from teachers and say, you are the coach for these kids. Your job is to get them to win in the game. If you can just get them to win, don't worry about anything else. I think it's a really, really good idea. Um, I think that separating grading from teachers makes a lot of sense in terms of aligning what the teacher is doing to what the kids need. And the kids actually, you know, in schools that are big enough, they can say, well, I need a coach that can really help me with X, Y, and Z. Maybe I, maybe I have a little bit of dyslexia, so I need a reading, a reading teacher who's really good at helping people who flip letters around a little bit too often. Or I'm, I'm really good at math. I just, I just need a little bit of extra time. Um, or or um, I need somebody who's really, really good at, at depicting things, showing things on the board, that kind of stuff. All of a sudden, instead of teachers trying to control kids, we're empowering kids by saying, you know, I, w when you start to think about it, Grades all of a sudden start to look an awful lot like a tool to compel kids to do what you want. And in fact, the research, if I remember right, and I'm citing this off the top of my head, I can't remember, I should say I'm not citing it off the top of my head because I can't remember where, where I would cite. Um, the research, as I recall, says that um, grades essentially don't, grades are not measuring uh, IQ, intelligence, or, or skills, math skills and, and STEM skills and those kinds of things. Um, if you want to measure those kinds of things, it's really good to do a standardized test. Instead, what grades actually measure is how well you fit in, how well you conform, and how well you uh, play the game of school, especially with your teachers. How, how, not how much you conform to um, the kids in your school, but how much do you conform to your teachers' expectations and needs. Um, and so the idea of taking grades away from teachers is really scary to teachers because it is a tool of compulsion. It is a tool of coercion. Um, and instead you just say, look, I'm just here to help you. And if you don't want to be here, like that's, that's understandable, but you know, I, I'm, my only job is to help you. I'm not going to ding you if you don't want to want to be here. It's really between you and that test. And I'm a really good teacher and I will help you be, be ready for that test. But beyond that, like, I don't need to fight you. I don't need to have that kind of stressful co conversation. Um, so I think when you start to look at it through that lens, if, if gym teachers said, we're not going to give you a grade. We're going to give you a citizenship mark of some kind. Like, hey, they're really nice. They're easy to get along with. They're, they, they do what they're asked to do the first time. I have no problem with that. That's fine. <laughs> and then after that, it's just, did they pass the physical fitness test requirements? Did they pass the written test on health requirements? And that's it. And I think that it would be entirely fine to let kids take tests for health. And as soon as they can pass it, they've earned their credit. Um, that actually gets me to a third and really important point. This is my last point, but probably the most important one. The number of kids who are so busy in their lives that they can't, they are too busy doing too many good things, and it really, really concerns me. As I look at my own kids, I'm really worried that they're going to be involved in 15 different things by the time they get to high school. And one of the things that drives me crazy is a lot of it is sports. I think sports is great. I mean, I'm terrible at all of them, but I, like, you learn incredibly good things. Why can't we count sports as PE credit? Like, you're on a basketball team. You practice every day. You work with your team. You get better over the course of the time that you're on the team. Why can't that count for PE credit? First easiest thing that we could do to make gym class better is to open up what you can count for PE and for health. And by the way, I think those two are very different. I think health is primarily about do you know what it takes to take care of yourself? And, and you know, we always joke about this in middle school, but let me be very, very blunt. There are a lot of kids who need to be taught explicitly. This is what hygiene looks like. This is what self-care looks like. In, in the age of social media, there's a lot to be said about teaching kids, here's what you need to know before you jump onto social media, right? So I, I'm not saying get rid of health. I'm actually saying that we could do a better job of, empower, of telling kids, here's what we need you to get out of it. Here's the test you can take to prove that you know it. And once you know it, you don't have to, you don't have to keep sticking around in my class. So come in, take the test. Once you've got the test, you're good to go. I'm just going to give you a citizenship mark. That's about it. Okay, but I'm not going to say whether you get an A or a B or a C. Like it's it's not really about whether I like you, right? That's the citizen citizenship mark is the is the conformity with the adult piece. What it's really about is have you learned this material? Has it helped you? Is it something that's going to be able to to impact you in a positive way? So, um, I don't think that the kids should burn down their school. I hope that they don't actually want to burn down their school. Um, let me let me sum up with with something that somebody said online recently that I think is worth repeating here. Um, a couple of Facebook friends of mine were arguing about homeschooling, and somebody said, well, I, I think it's really important to recognize just how, how much kids need to be socialized. And, and that's a common, you know, I, I love following the education debates. I think it's a, a really interesting space. 
And it's a very common deb debate, right? Well, I think homeschooling is good, but what about socializing kids? The response was probably the most honest one that I've seen. Um, and I think it gets to the heart of a lot of what we're talking about when we talk about education. The response was not, oh, those kids turn out fine, which I've also heard. But instead, the response was, socialization is exactly the reason why I want to pull my kids out and homeschool them myself. You're assuming that they are being socialized well. That has not been my experience. No, I'm not speaking for me. This is my friend online who said this. And to be honest, I think there's a lot to be said for that. When you look at kids who are sitting in a gym class and they're miserable because they're forced to be there, they don't want to be there, they know what they're supposed to do to be healthy, but it's this very awkward situation where they, you know, they can't have fun, right? I think that there really is something to be said for. How about we start with, is this a positive space where kids can do what they, what they need to do? They can, they can have a good time. They can do something meaningful. They can learn and grow in skills. They can um, feel like they're being affirmed um, in some meaningful way. And they can, they can, you know, if they're already a star basketball player, then they're expected to go to an even higher level or to learn a new sport. And if they're just beginning in some of these things, that that's okay, but they need to progress in a couple of key areas. Um, I think that we, we can rethink um, how we do gym. And I think once we start to rethink how we do gym, we'll ask questions like, what's the purpose of gym class? And then once we ask that, we'll go, well, what's the purpose of public education? And it'll be a really meaningful discussion. <coughs> so just to recap, don't burn down schools. Um, and my three points are, I think we need to listen to kids more about how public schools affect them and how different it could be if we actually gave students a little bit more voice. I think that that's a really important thing. That doesn't mean that kids should make the decisions about everything, about schools and homework, but I, I think that we are very far on the other side of that. I think generally we don't do a good enough job listening to them. Second, I think if you start to separate grading from teachers, you'll start to see how much of public school is really just kind of compulsory instead of actually about helping them and helping them learn. Um, and third, specifically for gym class, um, I, I think there are a lot of ways that you could make it better, and I would love to go on and on about that. Here's one simple way that kind of can open your eyes a little bit. Why can't kids earn gym credit through sports teams? And if they're on a sports team and they have six months on a sports team, I think that should count for six months of gym. Uh, to be honest, they're probably getting more out of it in six months, right? They still need to pass their health test, but that's not a big deal. And if I could throw in a, a last point, it would just be, if it's the health that you're worried about, I think that a written test, and as soon as you, you prove that you know this stuff, then you can move on. Um, I, I think it should be about what kids can do, not about how long you have bums and seats, right? I, I, I hate the credit hour. That's just the wrong, you know, it's, it doesn't work. So um, let me also just say that based on the kids that I've talked to, their experience is pretty much in line with what I see a lot of the time. Now, again, not because of bad teaching or, or anything else, and, and I'm not speaking about schools that I work at, I'm talking about schools in general that I see, people that I interact with um, at church. Like I said, that's where this happened, was at church. Um, typically, I see some kids engaged in gym and a bunch of kids sitting off to the side kind of doing whatever they want, um, and a lot of them wishing that they could, instead of sitting in a gym class where everybody's playing basketball, do dance or um, do... Um, badminton or something really cool like archery, or maybe just participate in their soccer team and count that for gym. Um, I think that once we start to think in th these ways, it actually gets really, really exciting and cool. Um, but schools have to be willing to do that, and they can't right now. Um, and that's another conversation for another day. Why can't schools do this? Um, but yeah, if, 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 the, if I had a magic button and could change the world, that's the kind of stuff that I would start doing. So I have, I have fulfilled my promise to, to the kids, and there it is. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it.